This video is brought to you by Raycon. I don't know where this music comes from in this game's jukebox mode, but if I had to guess, Sonic likely has a pair of Raycons jammed up his eardrums. It only bleeds if you think about it, Sonic. But hey, can't say I blame for choosing these. Raycon's everyday earbuds offer amazing audio quality at half the price compared to other premium audio brands out there. You shouldn't have to choose between buying a pair of earbuds and paying your electric bill for the month. And you know you're getting quality just by going by the tens of thousands of five-star reviews you can find on their store page. As someone who's been actively using theirs for a couple of years at this point, they're comfortable fit thanks to their optimized gel tips is a big thing for me, as well as the 8 hours of playtime on one charge, the carrying case extending that to 32 hours, it's just the icing on the cake. I just recently cleaned up my garage to start up my yoga routine again, and my Raycons were the perfect companion as I listen to podcasts while throwing my back out reorganizing all this crap. But I also like using them for other household duties as well, like folding laundry when I actually feel like folding my clothes. Click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash some call me Johnny to get 20% off your Raycon purchase plus free shipping. It greatly helps support this channel, but either way, I just appreciate your love and support anyway. Now let's continue on with the show. Are you ready for round two? And welcome back to round two, where I take a second look at a game I already reviewed, either because of uh, patch updates, DLC, or just general opinion of the game has changed and I want to update you guys on that. Today's subject should be no surprise, it was a shoe in for a second look once it was confirmed it was getting DLC. Sonic Frontiers, at the time of this video, Sonic Team's latest 3D endeavor concerning Sonic the Hedgehog, the dude I probably have the most love-hate relationship in the history of ever. It's been a while since I played this game front to back, but in the original review, I thought Sonic Frontiers laid the foundation for a very promising future for the blue blur. The idea of taking Sonic to larger worlds, but maintaining the high octane speed and dexterity that made it extremely fun just to run around in. However, the package collectively was uh, passable. The story I found pretty enjoyable, with IDW writer Ian Flynn on board. The narrative was bursting to an almost absurd degree with callbacks and references to previous games that made it feel like the series actually had some bona fide continuity for once. Yeah, it's pandering as all hell. I even considered it potentially alienating the newcomers who have no fucking clue what in God's name these characters are even talking about. Or why Knuckles thinks of the Sonic 3 opening when he's reminiscing about his Master Emerald Shrine back at home. Should have just showed it a screenshot of Sonic Adventure 1 there. That said, I didn't really mind any of this, but that's only because I've been playing Sonic games for as long as I have. And what some might call on the nose, I felt was validation. It was great to see the story acknowledge past games and give us the sense that these characters we've been playing for so many years have indeed grown and matured from your basic platforming mascot. I also enjoyed the inclusion of Sage, Eggman's new digital daughter figure, and I'm seriously, seriously hoping they don't fuck this character up. I'm not expecting every mainline game from this point on to be as layered or as melancholic as Frontiers was, but the impression Sage left on me and seeing her growth was amazing and I hope future games continue to make her a great inclusion, not only as a potential new co-villain but as a companion to enhance what already makes Dr. Eggman so great. A Maria and Gerald dynamic, only they both have the gun pointed at you. I didn't find the game amazing, not even great, but I did find it good, which is more than I can say for the guy given prior history, but I love the amount of freedom the devs gave us in tweaking Sonic's controls to whatever suits the current need. Acceleration, top speed, turning speed, jump deceleration, oh that's something fun to turn off, let me tell you, and like no shit, this was something I ended up using more than I thought I was going to, mainly because of the new challenges added in the DLC. I'm glad we have the options to tweak this kind of stuff. It's just a shame most of it only applied in the overworld because whenever you had to do cyberspace levels, you know, to collect the keys and unlock the vault holding the chaos emeralds, you're locked to a more rigid control scheme that didn't feel much better than the shit Sonic Forces offered, and I despise what Forces did to the boost formula. The neutered boost, the stiff double jump, ugh. I know a lot of folks don't mind the air boost, it's essentially a third jump now, and with good timing you can use that to your full advantage, but I can't fucking stand it. It's too unruly for me to ever feel good using and stress. That's really important to me. It's not just a matter of the utility of the skill, but the feeling of using it. The graphical popping for the overworld was obnoxious, which is especially dubious because collecting a bunch of things in the overworld was a major focus point of the game's exploration. The combat was not much beyond mashing the same button for repeated effect, and I didn't find any of the other moves you unlocked in the game's limited skill tree to be much more engaging. I'd say you, check YouTube for other Sonic Frontiers videos from players casual to high end, and I guarantee most, if not all, players are just using the basic stomp because it does the most damage, it's easy as shit to pull off, it's efficient, and I don't want to bother with the projectile move, the dive kicking, or fuck I left Sonic the wash cycle again. Again, Sonic Frontiers loads of potential. I think it's clear that Sonic Team wanted to demonstrate what they had in mind for the future of 3D Sonic games, but 
there was still a lot of work to be done, which is kind of sad to think about because uh, despite the game having a longer than usual development cycle, the pandemic probably having a help in that too, but uh, I read that the development of this game wasn't exactly the best. There was the focus, test groups not driving with the direction, forcing the team to rethink factors constantly, Sonic team stressing out over the game not meeting this quality that I don't think even they knew what that was. There's a part of me that feels Sonic Team, or maybe Sega of Japan, is still too hell-bent on putting so much focus on the next Sonic game being unique or grandiose when I personally think they should just make the game fucking fun and consistent, and you, you certainly don't need Sonic to have a triple A budget or design mentality to make that possible. In fact, I think that'll only spell bad news for the devs given the unneeded pressure they put on themselves trying to reach a quota or quality that I'm sure most Sonic fans wouldn't even give a shit about in the first place. Hell, even if the games were shitty, Sonic fans would start defending that shit in 10 years anyway. Obviously, I could only speak for myself, but if I learned something like Sonic Mania or Generations was only made with a shoestring budget and wasn't a 50 hour long adventure, I couldn't give any less of a shit than I do now because those games knew exactly what they wanted to be, they're fun, and they're clearly not having to worry about catering to a design mentality that can make game development unfun and crazily unhealthy. I want a Sonic game to be good, but I also don't want the devs to kill themselves trying to reach this state of nirvana they think they need to achieve in order for a Sonic game to be considered fun or good. I'm hoping if the next game is going to be like Frontiers, I want them to learn and streamline the things most agreed was great, remove what didn't, and don't worry too much on adding new things that are just there because of the sense of obligation or having this dartboard mentality that I feel has plagued Sonic since the fucking mid 90s. But Maybe they're already learning and setting up the dominoes for a truly great follow-up, because to the collective shock of many, definitely me, a Sonic team would then later announce, just a little after the game's release, that Frontiers is getting DLC, free DLC at that, uh, released in separate updates throughout the year. At first, I was just going to cover the additional updates for this video, but I figured eh, it's been a while since I played the game front to back, I'm already making you guys wait a bit between videos as I get the rest of the year settled, so for this round too, I'm just going to play the whole thing again, DLC included, and we'll get to the appropriate topics as I go along. As a heads up, I'm once again playing this on my play. PlayStation 5, though I did end up double dipping for the Steam version, but that was more so I could ready myself for the eventual hacks I will no doubt experience on the next Sonic hacking contest. I also want to take this time to thank my patron and Twitch subs for joining me for my uh, recording adventures for this round two video. It's one of the perks of my uh, of my Patreon or being a Twitch sub is that you can join me for recording sessions uh, when I announce them. And uh, we, we hosted a lot of them for this one because Frontiers is a meaty game, but it was really fun. I think one of the highlights I had was actually achieving the Platinum Trophy like during the recording session, and uh, a few of you popped up like, I was here! Like I achieved the world record or some other shit like that. But so it was really funny. And uh, a lot of shit happened during those recording sessions. <laughs> you might be asking, it's like, why the fuck are you even bothered doing this shit? Like, is it really worth it? And I was like, no, it's not. I don't know what I'm flying towards, but I hope it's interesting. Oh my God, now I got a sweet rave in the background! <laughs> Sonic, what the fuck are you doing? I know I'm supposed to hit the tube on his head. The game won't fucking let me. But all right, I'm burning daylight here. So let's revisit Sonic Frontiers. The only thing I won't be really covering is the story again, because I feel there's nothing more I can add or say that I haven't delved into in the original video. The exception to this is the third and final update, The Final Horizon. It not only adds a different take on the game's fourth island complete with a playable Amy, Knuckles, and Tails, but it also has additional, albeit optional, story beats that flesh out some hanging threads from previously, as well as give us a new final boss that isn't an Ikaruga callback. That said, the story beats for this section I found pretty innocuous, being honest. Nothing more than some dialogue between characters that made me go, oh, that's neat, or that was nice. It doesn't really change the story, it just adds some nuance. And without really spoiling it directly, at least not now, the new ending is more heartwarming, I guess? But the status quo remains the same as it was in the original, more somber ending. <laughs> the difference between the two being whether you want to make Eggman a little more miserable for a couple of seconds. I don't because I hate seeing Eggman this depressed. We'll get into the Final Horizon stuff later in this video, but for now, uh, let's start from the beginning. All right, first up is Kronos Island, and I guess I should be thankful that the first like third of this island is mainly a tutorial to give folks a chance to learn the ropes, and I had a lot of rust to shake off. But I'm happy to say it didn't take me long to get back into the swing of things, and before I knew it, I was zooming around, running in circles like a dipshit to build up rings and boosts, and mashing the attack button a whole lot before my thumb told me to fucking stop it. So here's the thing, before I even started recording these sessions, I decided for myself that I was essentially gonna make a completed file. Uh, for the base game, anyway, and not the Final Horizons, that's considered a separate mode. It's weird. 
I don't know what update added it, but there's now a visual tracker that lets you know when you've S-ranked all the cyberspace levels, defeated every mini boss in the island, fished the fucking lake dry, watched all the side story stuff, and collect all of the overworld memory tokens. What? Holy shit of all the things to make us fully collect for an extra costume. Why all the memory tokens? Look at how many are on the fucking map in Chaos Island alone. Now there's so many of these because originally you could just collect whatever was in the way as you made story progression highlighting that sense of freedom that Sonic Frontiers likes to flourish in. When you suddenly make it mandatory for 100%, which not even the platinum trophy asks you for, it is the worst fucking thing in the game. The tedium is off the charts. The intent being probably, you know, it's the journey, not the destination that matters. But you know what that journey mostly consists? of that shit your reward for getting all the islands completed again not counting the new island for the final update is this little burger king crown and folks i shit you not that was the only reason why I even considered doing this. I love it when games give you a crown for being a shithead. Like the crowns you got in Kingdom Hearts 2, all three of them, this hit the same feeling, so I made the commitment of getting this cheap, flimsy-ass hat that doesn't really exist or mean anything. And let me tell you something, folks, this was an enormous waste of time. All right, well, knowing I was gonna do this, you know, I just didn't want to get everything I needed from Big's fishing minigame. I wanted to explore the islands proper, play and max out all the cyberspace levels, and do all the new challenges added in the updates. Let's cover cyberspace levels again. I didn't have the highest opinion of these originally. I think I even called them the worst part of the game if I remember correctly. And my opinion on these haven't really changed much. I don't dislike them as much as I used to, but my feelings for them collectively is still a resounding meh. God, any time the level design calls back to a classic Sonic stage from Generations or Forces, I'm miserable because Sonic feels so goddamn sluggish with his mediocre boost, his mediocre speed, his collision with slopes and other gimmicks feeling off. God. Get it away from me. These become much better when they emulate stuff from the adventure era. They're not perfect one-to-one -one recreations, mind you. But I believe the more expansive level design better complement a 3D Sonic, even if this Sonic turns in midair with the rigidness of a geriatric scarecrow. Still, when it came to 100% in these, I'm talking finishing all the missions offered, making sure I have enough rings by the end, finishing with a certain amount of time to get the S rank, and grabbing all five red rings. I didn't have much trouble doing all that, except for this dickhead, stage 1-2. It's the second cyberspace level in the game, but for some goddamn reason it has the strictest S rank requirement, giving you the completely wrong idea on how difficult getting all the other S ranks are. That's not difficult at all, that's the thing, but this stage is like, I don't know, fuck! You can't even afford a simple misstep. You went left instead of right, reset. Homing attack didn't go off and you stuttered for half a second, reset. Bothered killing an enemy, reset. This is the fucking pits. And considering how much easier it is to S rank this stage in the dedicated cyberspace challenge mode offered, they had to have known, hey, maybe we fucked this one up, but instead of fixing it for story mode, they left it as is. So legit, if you can S rank one, two originally, that's it, you won the game, that's the end right there. There's nothing left more challenging than this. I'm actually a little confused about what the point of the cyberspace challenge is even supposed to be. The game already has an arcade mode that lets you revisit any cyberspace level that you've already completed without having to head into the island. Cyberspace challenge is basically the same thing, but it's more like the egg shuttle in Sonic Colors, where you have to play all the cyberspace levels in a given island back to back with no breaks, and you're ranked for it too. I understand that is a different sort of challenge than just picking whatever stage you want and going to town, I just don't find it that much of a substantial addition, so I didn't bother doing all these since I knew I was going to 100% them in the main story anyway. As soon as my first star shower happened, I did wince a little because I remember thinking this mechanic was more intrusive than beneficial. You rake in the coins needed for Big's fishing game like a crack fiend, no doubt, but I mean, you had all these streaks of light coming from every direction which I felt obstructed your current mission objective, especially if you like marking your next destination on the map a whole bunch. The slot reels that spun whenever you collected the star was placed right in the middle of the fucking screen, and I guess I didn't need to see where I was going. It all felt clumsy. But I'm happy to say that an update has made this less bothersome to some degree. I go to the options menu and I see that there's an option to disable the slot reel. Oh, thank God, I thought. This probably means I can collect those stars and score all those coins without having my vision obscured. What this option actually does is remove the entire star shower mechanic completely. Like, no slot reel, no light beacons, no stars to collect, period, no coins to collect. Guys, if you're a surgeon and if a patient has a growing cyst on their shoulder, the solution isn't to cut the whole fucking arm off. Come on! <laughs> What's even stranger is that for the Final Horizon update, they fixed the star shower problem by just giving you a set amount of cocoa you need to finish the game whenever you grab the fallen star. No slot reels needed, you can still see where you're going, you get the benefit of the mechanic while still keeping the pace up. Just have it that way for the rest of the game, was that not possible? I'm not a game developer, man, I don't know, but that just seems obvious. 
But moving on, despite taking the time to properly explore the island for trinkets, I was still going to pay my respects to Big's fishing game, because no matter what, this is still categorically the best means of farming everything you need for progression. And now there's a way to score even more tokens thanks to this brain dead barbecue minigame that was added with the bonus Monster Hunter costumes. I decided to wear it for my revisit on the third island, and I think by the end of it Sonic was in shambles because of all that shit he was wearing. This game really is brain dead though, once you get a feel for it, you're going to cook the meat just right every single time. Sonic's cholesterol is fucked though. For me, Big's Fishing is also just the best place to level up your stats, your power, your defense, your speed, and your rank count. It takes no time at all to max these out with a few fishing sessions. And considering my ambivalence to the game's combat already, if I can make these end quicker, I will gladly fish up more hammerheads. Look at this dopey looking motherfucker. I'm also glad that leveling up ring and speed stats is far less time consuming now. This was the worst to level up originally because you could only level up one of these stats one interaction at a time. But now when you talk to the specific Coco, you can just have them put all of your Coco to the stat you want increased. That's much better. I actually ended up maxing out all the stats this time, so now I didn't have to run in circles like an insane asshole just to move faster for a bit. But as much as you can get almost everything in Big's Fishing, a later update also added these new musical notes and these special Coco scattered across every island. The music notes are songs from other Sonic games that you can play from your jukebox if you have it enabled. If you're getting sick of the island's regular themes, spice things up by finding these musical notes and get disappointed that a specific song you like isn't in the game. They give me Wonder World, Windy Hill, Desert Ruins, and Sky Row from Sonic Lost World, but no sea bottom segue? Come on, guys. Anyway, it's very strange that these music notes aren't a part of the end game tally, though. Yeah, you don't need to collect these to 100% the game, but considering they still have a dedicated icon on the map, you want to collect them out of principle, yeah? You want this shit cleaned out, no stone unturned, and not for thing, I really appreciate how the locations of these required you to visit parts of the island you would never consider otherwise. I had no idea that there was an underwater like, village in the fourth island because originally the only thing of worth was the four plot towers and watching Sonic die for a few seconds. The new special Coco are going to make your ass work for them though. Doubling down on the shameless asset recycling, Sonic Team decided to make something devious out of all those floating platforms, rails, and springs, and offer players some grueling obstacle courses in every island that you could do to collect these special Coco. You know they're special because they're all wearing a funny hat. I would never. Taking these to the Elder Coco will permanently extend your boost gauge to last longer, which is cool, but kind of loses some luster in a game where you can already achieve infinite boost by making a figure eight with your silo. By making a figure eight with your... Figure eight. Figure eight. Figure eight. Figure eight. There we go. Where was I? Uh, I would have preferred some more combat abilities worth the damn for collecting these. I really have no reason to use these other skills because the stomp is that useful. But you know what? These Coco challenges I thought were pretty good. Although sometimes the challenge is actually fucking finding where the obstacle course starts. Another thing that highlights, if not further emphasizes, the problem with the game's graphical pop in. I, I know, I know, you're probably tired of me harping on that, but I can't help it when it's such a core issue of the game's design and they insist on adding these needle in the haystack distractions. But okay, if we're speaking strictly about the special Coco now, I found them well balanced and just challenging enough to test you on the intricacies of the game's platforming without it being the overly precise bullshit they throw at you later. <laughs> we will get there. The only one of these that I didn't like, that fucking tower on the first island. Dude, they did it again. They put one of the hardest special Coco challenges in the first island, giving players the completely wrong idea on how hard these actually are across the game. But this one sucks. Whenever you're required to make precise tiny ass movements with this Sonic with a stiff jump and small platforms, fuck. Oh, it's so easy to overshoot your positioning and it happened to me a lot. Fuck you and fuck your hat. So to say again, it didn't take me long to get reacquainted with the game's mechanics. So for shits and giggles and because I wanted to do something for the sake of feeling something anything, I learned about the Hedgehog Space Program thanks to my friend Jason and I triggered the battle against Giganto early. But because I did this, there ended up being two Gigantos loaded during the initial climb. So I'm here getting ready to deck the shit out of this guy while his twin brother pretends he doesn't see anything because he knows if he looks at me weird, he's next. I know speedrunners often use this as a means of skipping the whole island, but because I knew I was going to do everything anyway, I did have to go back for the other story cutscenes and triggers, which required me to get a little creative with Sonic's positioning to trigger specific scenes and to despawn the second Giganto, though if you ask me, I think he just went fishing. This strangely had some ramifications during my visit to the fifth island, Oranos. I read that this island was originally supposed to be part of the first island before it got split up before release, but I guess these two still share some coding underneath the hood? Every time I did something in this island, cyberspace, bigs fishing, a mini boss encounter, the game would then constantly remind me that Sonic is no match for Giganto because of that glitch I did earlier. It acts as if Giganto is still alive, and I mean, that's not entirely wrong, but I find it fascinating fascinating that by doing this glitch, it kind of reveals the original intent behind the game's world development. But that's it for the first island. Alright, Ares Island, the Desert Island, 
I remember thinking this was all right, but it wasn't fun to explore when you had to find specific things. The map design was full of these trenches that railroaded you hard to a specific path that made things harder to discern their exact location. And Sonic Frontiers, despite being compared so much to say Breath of the Wild, this wasn't a game that you could freely climb any wall that you wanted, I mean, without doing glitches and all that. Thankfully, that wasn't too much of a problem for me this time. There was even a few occasions where I got a little creative with the platforming, but this was few and far between. I'm glad to see they did nothing to fix the camera issues regarding certain enemies. I swear, every time the camera hard locks at this piece, of shit when I'm just trying to run past them, I want to crack my controller in half. Oh god, shark. I forgot how much I hated this bloated nothing of a mini boss, and if you want to meet the mini boss quota for 100%, you gotta fight this thing twice. Ugh. It was here that I decided to give the new birthday mode a shot. This was added in the second update to commemorate Sonic's birthday, so what this means for us is birthday costumes for not only Sonic, but the Coco also get birthday hats, and even our friends get in on the celebration, but I bet they're thinking in these circumstances, this is the shittiest fucking birthday party they've ever been a part of, and I'm including all that shit that happened in Sonic Generations. It's not just costumes though, you also have this. This very loud birthday theme that you can have on the HUD, which is just ugh. And now all the floating platforms and grind rails are colorful and birthday themed. Hooray! There's even this new birthday mix of Sonic's tunes that play in the background, and it's an impressive like 35 minute long rendition of a bunch of Sonic tunes from all sorts of games. Sonic CD, Sonic R, Sonic Advance, Sonic Mania, Sonic Runners, holy shit they actually remembered that game. There's even some Knuckles Chaotix beats in here as well, it's great. But the whole fucking playlist resets the moment you lose a life for any reason, and that's why? I was listening to some funky Sonic R tunes and now my ears are filled. Fuck you. I didn't keep this birthday stuff on for very long though. It's too much of an eyesore for me personally. But there was something deliciously dark about seeing Sonic wear a Santa outfit while holding his head in pain as he was dying of terminal cyber corruption. I'm on my fucking lunch break, okay? Right, this crane game at the end of the second island. Hmm. Well, good thing I can just ignore it by going to this gap above the closed door. How did they not catch this? It's such an obvious oversight. They had to have known and just didn't give a shit. Hello, Wyvern. Great to hear your theme again, but I hate you with every fucking fiber of my being now, and you know why. <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> All right, time for the third island, Chaos Island, and boy, I really soured on this place during this revisit. The forced, unprovoked 2D sections got under my skin as well as locating the specific ground rails and platforms needing to reach the mandatory plot points. The increased fog and poor weather conditions, especially at night, made me miserable when going Coco collecting. This stupid fucking bulk collecting mini game where you have to break all these boxes in a time limit. This gave me so much shit this go around for some reason, and it's here that really highlights how sometimes Sonic just does random shit because of the game buffering your button inputs. Homing attacking twice, even if I only press the button once. Sonic not making up his fucking mind on when he'll initiate a combo or just smack the thing once. God, I don't remember it being this bad during my first run, but this island sucks now. Oh, and it has that damn pinball minigame at the end. Fuck, I forgot about this. Oh, God. It's a shame, too, because Chaos Island has my favorite overworld music in the game. And I'm talking about all those separate movements involved that gets more, you know, bombastic, grandiose to do more shit. It's damn good, but goddamn, this was not a fun trip this time. Oh, my lord. I know Rhea Island is technically the fourth island, but I don't really count it because the only thing you do is climb these towers for story purposes, and then it's off to the actual final island, Oranos. Shoutouts to the moment where I climbed the first tower, didn't activate it, and then just fucking leave. I could be really dense at times as my patrons found out, and because I did that, it made the second climb super awkward because certain homing attack chains didn't respawn and the camera got really fucky. You deadass just can't rotate the fucking thing at some points of the tower, and I have to pray I get the positioning correctly. It's a hell of my own making, but this game can still kiss my ass. At this point, I decided to prioritize some cleanup since I knew I was reaching the end of the base game, and the cries for me to obtain the new spin dash were becoming deafening. So I decided to turn my attention to the new action challenges added in the second update. At first, I wasn't sure what was being asked of me here. I silent one of these stopwatches, a challenge appears, and suddenly I got all these glowing orbs spawning all over the place. Do I gotta collect all these orbs at once? Seems unfeasible. They seem to be all over the place. My rank was pretty poor. What am I doing here? It turns out it's just a score attack, and the best way to get an S rank is cranking out that score multiplier. So how do you do that? Doing a whole bunch of shit at once in the allotted time. Gotta keep running, gotta keep boosting, I can't stop, won't stop, I'm jacking on red bull, can't be stopped, my heart's fucking losing it, ground the rails, I'll fuck on board that now. Balls, 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 balls. Oh, enemy chains. Stop, 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 stop. Hey, perfect. The spin dash is now mine. At first, I thought it was just a second. I'll be a faster version of the boost, but holy shit, aim it just right in certain terrain, and the amount of airtime you can achieve is insane. And this also applies for cyberspace levels, too. Yeah, the spin dash carries over there as well. And I wish I had this sooner because this makes getting other S ranks a cinch. Look at Sonic Go, dude. Hot damn. This was something I legit wanted to see added in the original video. And I'm glad Sonic Team delivered. It's my second favorite spin dash in 3D Sonic. 
like now. I feel the one in SA1 and 2 is still better because I feel I have a little more control and precision with it on top of the added airtime. Still, this was very much worth doing those action challenges for, so get this as soon as possible. I was on autopilot by the time I got to Oranos Island, though. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Is it Oranos or is it Oranos? I don't know. I don't have the video up by the time I'm reading the script. I'm continuing on. The memory token requirement for plot progression here is so high that you're pretty much required to get all of your shit over in Big's Fishing Pond, so that's what I did. I think the reward balancing could have been better laid out to avoid needing to do this for efficiency, but at the same time, I don't mind Big's Fishing in this because I find it legitimately relaxing. Although this is coming right off of my fishing high I recently developed in Final Fantasy XIV. Look at my Pog Shark. Look at this goofy fucking guy. I'm still reeling from the game acting funny because I did the early Giganto fight. The prompt from the top right is all sorts of confused right now. Collect Vault. Climb Giganto. End game time, and I made sure to switch to hard mode to get the final battle against the moon. What a weird requirement, and all for an encounter that's so against the grain of a standard supersonic fight. Previous battles were these epic Dragon Ball-esque slobber knockers. All right, enough of that. Have a space shooter now, idiot. But depending on your taste, this isn't the actual end anymore, because the final update of Sonic Frontiers gave us the final horizon, acting as an alternate pathway to the ending, where instead of having Sonic do his usual thing with the Chaos Emeralds, he instead focuses on a way to channel his cyber corruption to his benefit, while his friends do the actual emerald collecting, apparently suffering great injury the more progress they make. This is what Sonic was suffering from. Every time I interact with cyberspace, I'm getting more corrupted. Handling the Coco is affecting me the same way. <laughs> Good God, what the hell is this cyber corruption doing to these guys? Also, Sonic wasn't nearly as bitchy, so you know, buck up and get your asses back out there. Just a quick thing to note here, Final Horizon has its own save file once you get it properly going, so once you're in, you can't revisit any other island. So if you're still trying to get those collectibles for 100%, you're better off doing that first before heading in here. How else will you flex your burger king crown to Eggman? But I think this is the update everyone was really looking forward to, if only because for the first time in a mainline Sonic game since Sonic 06, if you could believe that, Amy, Knuckles, and Tails were fully playable characters in this. And they're pretty good. They're all just extensions of Sonic with their own flavor of platforming and combat. With enough upgrades, they can all boost, spin dash, stomp, do the homing attack, though I think Tails is the only one who can't do that for some reason, but he makes up for it with this spammable wrench attack that the dummy ring bombs in 06 wish they could emulate. Amy has this incredible triple jump that can combo into a glide, making almost any platforming challenge a breeze, though you can rest assured the game will still test your skills with this anyway, make no mistake. Knuckles is basically the same as ever, combat, gliding, wall climbing, although he can only climb certain walls in this, and look, I get it, but come on, man. A dude like Knuckles is built for exploration. Why the fuck can't he climb any surface he wants? Why has that only got to be these red walls? What the shit? Tails, though, holy hell, did he draw the lucky number for this. His long-range combat is great. He can fly for a period of time, though I don't like this little wind-up he has to do before entering flight. It just seemed unnecessary. You know, originally, Knuckles' glide also had a similar issue like this, and his glide turning was so wide, too. That sucked, but that was eventually patched and made better. They didn't do shit with Tails, though, so maybe people didn't complain as much? I find this just as obnoxious? I don't know! Here's the thing with Tails, though. Like, it wasn't enough that they gave him his flight, but one of his upgrades is his Cyclone from Sonic Adventure 2, and this thing just fucking flies. You can fly anywhere you want. It drains boost meter, but guess what? You can just... You can just... You can Jesus Christ! You could just give yourself infinite boost whenever, and now the world is Tails' delicious oyster. Platforming is dead. Challenge is dead. Hell, this nukes any sense of curiosity if I'm being real, and that's ultimately one of the big issues I have with Final Horizon. I don't have much incentive to do anything outside of mandatory plot-related shit. Amy, Knuckles, and Tails start at level 1, so you gotta amass a bunch of skill points to even unlock some of the most basic shit, like the Psyloop. This also means that their strength, defense, ring count, and speed is also at level 1, so you won't be doing much, if anything, against these new souped-up mini-bosses, and they tune these fuckers up big time. It's nuts how much faster these guys move in this island specifically, my god. Gathering skill points is easy enough, though. All you gotta do is find these skill cocos, and they're everywhere, as a heads up. And there you go. You get a lot of skill points at once. You only need to find a handful of these guys to start unlocking skills worth a damn, but after that, what then? Combat? No, I don't find the reward worth it. These characters are still level 1, there's no big sufficient to crank up my power and defense in a reasonable amount of time, and the portal gears for cyberspace levels aren't even a thought for me because only Sonic can enter cyberspace stages, so I'd rather just collect them as Sonic, who also has all the stats maxed out. Should I fill out the map? Maybe, but on top of the minigames being much tougher than before, not to mention you only cover a fraction of what you used to get previously, I just don't feel like I'm really making a dent on anything outside of what's required for me for story progression. So what ends up happening with me is that I level up Amy, Knuckles, and Tails until I get their broken ass flight abilities, and then I just make a beeline through all the required missions until I get control of Sonic again. 
I mean, for what it's worth, especially with Tails flying around the island with the Cyclone that's exhilarating in its own way, it's just, I find it strange that they make this whole ass new island with new characters, but make it so easy to ignore. This new uh, alternative take on Oranos Island ultimately feels like a testing bed for whatever they have in mind for a potential Sonic Frontier sequel, and that's exciting to think about. Man, if this is how they want to approach Sonic's friends in future games, that sounds very promising. But this does leave what we have here feeling half cooked. Like the base game, full of potential, it's just, it just still has a lot of wrinkles to iron out. And then we get to Sonic's portion, and then the whole thing just shits the bed. So after you do your thing with Amy, Knuckles, and Tails, Sonic is placed back in the spotlight to initiate his trial to master his cyber corruption. This involves Sonic collecting enough of these Lookout Cocoa to unlock these trial towers that you gotta climb up, very much like the ones you scaled in Raya Island, only these towers fucking hate you. Like their skill counterparts, Lookout Cocos are easy as pie to discover, and you can collect these with any character. In fact, these are so easy to find that by the time you get back to controlling Sonic, you'll likely already have the required amount to unlock all the trial towers and get straight to the final part of the game, which is exactly what happened with me on my first run of this DLC when it initially released. I didn't even realize there was brand new cyberspace levels on this island that you can also get Lookout Coco from. I'm dead serious, because you uncover the map so slowly on this new island, combined with how easy it is to get Lookout Coco through other means, I just didn't notice these new portals, and you know what, I wish I did earlier because I finally gave these a try for this video, and these are some of the best cyberspace levels in the game. They're very broad, full of interesting objectives and gimmicks. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. There's even a throwback to Sonic Adventure where you race against Tails. With the spin dash at your disposal, you can get away with doing some crazy ass shit. One of the hidden exits located in one of the stages pretty much requires that you do that, holy fuck, I would have never known that was there without looking up a guide. What the fuck? But these were really fun. It's a shame that the game puts so little emphasis on them though. I'm telling you, don't skip out on these. Anything to prolong your eventual visit to the actual trial towers. Good fucking God. Some of the most insanely precise, long-winded, janky platforming challenges the game has to offer with no checkpoints. Yeah, if your ass falls down, you gotta make that whole climb again. You know, unless you know how to use the parry to potentially save yourself from backtracking. I'm not complaining, but why does this game's parry just let you ignore gravity? This makes Sonic the ultimate jump rope champion, but it'll always be an empty victory, Sonic, remember that. Still, a VV, you should probably take notes. Anyway, the Trial Towers. There's five of these sons of bitches, each specializing in a particular challenge. Honestly, they're not the worst thing I've experienced in Sonic, but they really highlight the troublesome quirk Sonic's control scheme suffers from in this game. I had to go into the game settings numerous times to fine tune my acceleration and speed just to make sure I can do these without eating too much shit. Not to mention, these towers trigger my vertigo something fierce the higher I climb up, especially when the weather gets miserable and my vision gets exceptionally shitty. But when you reach the top, of one of these, you're not done yet because you gotta cap it off with a combat trial. Killing enemies a specific way with a level one Sonic. Again, not the worst thing in the world, a part of me even liked the parry challenge because of the dexterity required. Constantly batting this thing away like an ex-girlfriend while you're trying to make out with your new girlfriend. Sonic's a piece of shit. It should also be said that these towers aren't as bad as they used to be because they got patched after enough people said Sonic Team, this fucking sucks. You can make them even easier by adjusting the difficulty and the options, which I do not blame you if you do because life's too fucking short. I thought I was being a chad to my audience when I did all the towers on normal, but then I get to the end of the last one, I talk with the Master Coco to initiate the final trial, and the fucking game hangs on the loading screen and I had to reset the game, with my autosave being right before I made the first climb. Thanks for wasting my fucking time, Vital Horizon. My patience is already paper thin by this point, so I switched to easy mode and holy fuck, it really does just hold your hand, but I don't give a shit. I know I can do it. My disc knows I can do it, the game said suck me anyway. That final trial though, oh my god, a boss rush against all three titans, but you're level one, you can only use the perfect parry, which is insanely tricky to pull off with some of these attacks, and your rings don't reset between encounters. This also includes tackling their little preludes before you even get to the supersonic part, and you have to keep doing these every time you fail. Boy, nothing gets the blood pumping like running on a corkscrew fruit by the foot with nothing happening. Can't afford to get hit? Ah, that's no problem, we're gonna have the 100 foot giant on wheels do light speed donuts for no fucking reason. Fuck! These fights are just not fucking fun with these conditions. I understand the point is to show your mastery of the game's combat to Master King, who constantly hovers around you like a bad Photoshop effect, but all this trial does is highlight the jankiness of the fights themselves, Wyvern taking the spot as the most obnoxious one. You got the unskippable, really dull prelude in the beginning, and then the supersonic portion is insanely long-winded because of how automated most of the fight is. If you fuck up parrying any of his attacks, your reward is 10 seconds of nothing happening as your rings are still draining in the background. The only only saving grace to this shit is that I get to listen to every boss's amazing vocal trap, which I just can't get sick of. I don't think I put enough emphasis on it in the original video, but all the boss themes in Sonic Frontier shit, all the vocal tracks in general, are top caliber shit. So even if I'm constantly fumbling through this final trial, losing another opportunity because I couldn't parry something on time or because the game cucked me again with something out of my control, there's a part of me that's always going...
finally. And my reward is another rematch against Supreme, who hasn't seen much of any change. So this is kind of a weird follow up after the trial, isn't it? But instead of ending things with a shoot 'em up sequence no one asked for, Supersonic gets a proper final boss against the end as it attaches an evil umbilical cord on Supreme and gives it more arms. But with his mastery over his cyber corruption achieved, Sonic taps into that power to uh, gain blue eyes. I mean, he also gets a new power aura, and that counts for something, but uh, I would have liked if the transformation was a little more dramatic. But either way, this fight sucks ass. You can't even do any permanent damage until you manage to detach the core from the head, which you can only target by... Well, that's just fucking it. I don't know how you're supposed to switch lock-on targets in this game, because that's something you never had to do until this fight. I think you're supposed to do the quick dodge near the head to get the reticle to switch, but if that's the case, why the fuck is it like that? It's so weird. Enough of the fucking balls, dude. Fuck out of here. Also, these fucking trees, get out of the way. This boss is at zero health. Why is it still going? Why did I get hit there? Can I not silent the boss when he's doing this? Why did I take damage there? What's going on? Ah! In a gameplay sense, I'd rather do the Ikaruga fight again. But Super Sonic gets so many cool moments during this. The transformation is kind of lame, but Sonic's mannerisms during this fight elicit the serious, no nonsense attitude that just screams, I'm gonna fuck you up now, like Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, but Sonic's still mentally sane. Look at this cheeky dick. Look at that swagger. He just casually masatsu's the guy like it's nothing. God, this gets my shown inside all hot and bothered. Kick his ass, Sonic. This fight sucks. But I won't lie, these little bits kind of make up for it. And then Eggman hijacks the fucking gun and uses Sonic as ammo. Sonic then becomes Dark Sonic from Sonic X, but only this one's actually cool. And the coup de grace is finally delivered to the end, which should be no surprise, Eggman has plenty of practice of blowing up moons. So the end is finished, and because Sage didn't have to sacrifice herself like originally, she gets to properly go home with her father. I'll admit, I found the original ending more impactful, but this also made me weep. I'm all for bittersweet conclusions because of how things play out, but sometimes you just want to go home happy. That said Final Horizon, didn't exactly leave me happy. In fact, the only reason why I didn't hate this even more is because it's free and technically optional. And all my problems with it aside, still, that was really cool of Sonic Team to do. Like the base game to say, I think for the third time in this video, it's loaded with a ton of potential and I'm happy to see Sonic's friends playable again and being legitimately fun to play around with, especially in this sandbox-like structure. But it is held back by clumsy execution and the same fundamental problems that plagued the original game. I guess you get what you paid for, but I feel some of these issues shouldn't have been issues in the first place. I think I may have mentioned this before, but just in case, but Sonic Team has stated that the success of Sonic Frontiers and its sales have given the team a larger budget for the next game. And you know, not to undermine that, that is legitimately great news. But I genuinely hope that whatever the next mainline game ends up being, they take everyone's critiques to heart and refine it into a Sonic game that rocks everyone's socks off. I'm not talking just making a great Sonic game, I'm just, I, I want a game that everyone loves. And I hope with every goddamn fiber in my being that they just don't reinvent the wheel again for no fucking reason. No, keep trying with this formula. There's so much you can do with it. I mean, yeah, at some point I would love a dedicated remake of the adventure games. Hell, I would love a new game in the style of adventure, but Sonic Team has made it repeatedly known that they want to look forward, not backwards for 3D Sonic. And what else can I say, but I hope they don't fuck it up. So the only thing I didn't really touch upon in this video was the new extreme difficulty, which I think you get by S ranking the battle rush or the battle challenge, whatever it is it's called in the options menu. And what that is, is a level one Sonic that you can't upgrade and he dies in one hit. No thanks. <laughs> but we're gonna call it a wrap there for today's video. And I do wanna thank my brother Elliot for helping me co-edit this one so that we wouldn't be spending any longer uh, cooking this video because you guys are already waiting uh, quite a bit between videos now and I, I promise the next one you won't be waiting nearly as long uh, it's just that events happening outside the realm of youtube happen to be coinciding with each other at the same time and there's only so much i can do about that so i do apologize for the wait but i, I promise you you will not be waiting nearly as long for the next couple of videos in terms of what that will be so again i want to focus on the mortal kombat spinoff video and then i want to do the doom follow-up uh, that's the 2016 eternal uh, combo video and then i want to get back into final fantasy uh, afterwards, it's we got the rest of the year to figure that out, and I hope you guys look forward to what I have in store for you guys anyway. Uh, as always, though, thank you all for tuning in and watching, and uh, let's get some patron shoutouts out of the way. All right, so once again, shout outs to more of my $10 or above patrons. Thank you all so much for your love and support. I mean, it really doesn't matter what pledge you make, uh, $1, $5, $10, it doesn't matter. All your support's appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, David Lee Smith, Make a Beat Man, True Blue Reviews, Jack Silverson, Blazeburg, Nintega 2000, Lauren Gregory, Ninja Joe 1807, Man with the Plan, Quote, Rhythm and Tempo, Admiral Onichan, Nolan Thunder, Shogun, Misatsu Mike, 
uh, Damix Cornlad, Steven Nelson, Wade uh, Achille, or Achille, I'm not sure, Alitio, Dylan, aka Damn Lucky, or was that Dylan, aka Damn Lucky, Ryan Poe, Leslie Molnar, Neo Sandman 4040, Spider Knife, Max Dreyer, Lon, Mysterious M, Mr. E, Chaotic Meatball, King Disaster Dracula, Robin 41, Fat Egg, Tao, Docking 23, Rodolfo Zorilla Rivera, Satsuma Koken, Waffle D, uh, I'm sorry, Wuffle D, PSI Win, Buck39213, JDude93, DFM, Stephen Wright, Cyrus D. Vania, uh, M450NF0XX, Jerf Rockstar, Samuel Bull, Liam, Mevins2001, Nerdzilla, Bubby NE, Ven, Barry Aldridge, uh, Shara Dean, uh, Alex Goodrich, your boy Beowulf, uh, Vangel Jurgo, Exo Bear, James, James Acosta, Frostfang, Ian, Elijah, Mizox, David, Alicia, Powerful One, That Boy, Tucker, uh, Andre Lindy, Jojo Harder, Josh Gourmet, Skullman, Zeno Jace, J Wolf, Quanner, or Quanner, Gino Sauce, Colada, Aeon 3, Veil 4, Riley Thompson, Sir Branner, Zendile, Griff, Bad Guy, Not Fun Guy, John Luivano, King Arthur, Ryan Wilder, Dakota Smith, Chilled Blade, Some Call Me Tim, Gabriel Davila, Christopher, Nefarious, Johto Lad 64, Lance Akira, Conor Shea, Trans Right, OK, Ace Jetstream, Jonathan Youngs, David Sheltron, Bus Score, Christopher Karasi, Steve Hedge, Seifer Blaze Jaeger, Gabriel Shutt, Chris, uh, Chris Gardner, Michael Al Alam, I want to say Alamo, but I think it's Alamo, Dibby, Last Crow, Larson, Naoto Plays, uh, parentheses, Gwen, Mr. Spaghetti, Alex James, Jordan Cullen, Fox Bateman, Simone, Gate 653, and finally for today, Obsidian Dynamite. I think the hardest part about reading all these names in a row is that all, all of you come from different walks of life, different countries of this world, and a lot of names have different, you know, inflections, dialects, accents, and this dumbass has to try and pronounce and correctly guess all of those at once. How am I doing? <laughs> I don't know, but I rely on your feedback. Uh, it's a bit, I mean, I, it's, it's legit one of my most endearing comments that I get. Uh, from patrons is like, hey, you got my name right, or you were nowhere fucking close, my guy. <laughs> Either way, your support is greatly appreciated. So I'll see you guys next time for the next video. Uh, as always, thank you all for watching. Stay safe out there. Have yourselves a fantastic night and take care.